Notice, this video was made before Player Core 2 came out for Pathfinder 2E, and so uses some class options from the original Pathfinder 2 Core Rulebook. Hello YouTube, and welcome to Cyprime Productions. I'm here to help enhance your tabletop gaming experience. Welcome to Part 3 of my look into making an anime-style swordsman in Pathfinder 2E. As a quick recap, for the purposes of these videos, I'm defining an anime-style swordsman as a character who 1. uses a katana or katana-like weapon, 2. they are unarmored, and 3. they are a solid frontline combatant. I know this leaves out certain anime swordsmen like Guts from Berserk. I don't have anything against Guts, that's just not the vibe I'm going for for these particular builds. Okay, so far in part one, we had an elf monk or a human monk raised by elves who used an elven curve blade, which I counted as close enough to a katana. In video two, I showed how to use various ancestries in order to make a character whose body was so tough it counted as breastplate. But these aren't perfect builds for an anime style swordsman. Most anime feature humans in a world where humans are the only sentient creatures, and so some may want to play a human raised by humans wielding an actual katana, and we can do that here. So, as always, to make a Pathfinder character, we start with the ABCs of character creation. A stands for Ancestry, and actually for this build, any ancestry is valid. For this video, I'm going to go with human because of what I just said, but... If you want to make an elf, or a dwarf, or a leshy swordsman, that's cool too. For the sake of this video, I'll make some choices, but just know that any ancestry and any heritage work. I'll choose human, and just for the sake of variety, I'll choose the heritage winter-touched human, which gives us cold resistance. That way we can do that scene in anime where a swordsman trains in the middle of winter with no shirt because they're a stupid anime character. For our first level Ancestry feat, I'll grab Haughty Obstinacy, which makes us resistant to mind control. This is another anime cliche where swordsmen have such disciplined minds that they can resist mental domination. Whichever Ancestry you end up choosing, you'll want to grab a bonus to both Strength and Dexterity. B is for background, and like the other builds, we don't need a specific background here. You can grab any background that nets you a bonus to Strength and Dexterity again. Since in the previous two builds I went with Martial Disciple and then Raised by Belief, I'll go with a simple Warrior background here, but again, you can choose whatever you want. I'll put up what the Warrior background gets us on screen now. C is for Class, and that is where we have to start making specific decisions. For our class, we're going to go with Barbarian, and for our subclass, which is called a Barbarian Instinct, we are going to go with Dragon. Now, the type of dragon you pick doesn't matter. I'm going to go with a Red Dragon, just because being so angry that your sword lights on fire sounds as anime as it gets, but you can choose whatever you want. I would suggest against a Cold Dragon, because you do not need additional cold resistance. They don't stack. Also, Barbarians get a bonus to Strength. Now, as a reminder, this video is being published before Monster Core and Player Core 2 come out, so Dragons, Barbarians, and Dragon Instinct Barbarians will change between now and then, so you may have to do some modifications to this build later on. Fair warning. Choose any first level Barbarian feat you want, along with any skills you want. I'll put up what Barbarians get on screen now. Lastly, for our four free ability boosts, let's go with Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, and any one mental ability score you want. So, I know what you're thinking. This guy is going to need armor. And you're right. This build for the first three levels would do best by wearing studded leather or a chain shirt. Now, eventually we will get out of our armor, but for now it's best if we have something. But I have a compromise. Many anime characters are obsessed with belts and buckles. Look at Asbel Lant from the Tales of Grace's video game here. Five buckles on each sleeve, plus three buckles on his back, and there's more on the front side that you can't see in this picture. I think our barbarian wearing buckle armor would not go amiss too badly and still keep us firmly in the anime swordsman aesthetic. 
So at level 2, Barbarians get a skill feat, pick whatever you want, as well as a class feat. We're actually going to trade in that class feat for an archetype feat, and we are going to go into Dragon Disciple, which we qualify for because we are specifically a Dragon Instinct Barbarian. You get resistance equal to half your level against one type of damage, including possibly bludgeoning or piercing damage, and a bonus to saves against sleep and paralysis. All of that is nice, but not what we are here for. We just need access to a later Dragon Disciple feat, and so we have to grab the Archetype feat first. At level 3, you can pick up some good stuff. You get a General feat, which you can use to pick up anything you want. We'll grab Toughness. You will also gain a skill increase, pick whatever you want, and you also get the Deny Advantage class feature, which is nice, but not particularly germane to this build. Level 4, though, is where the build fully comes online. You get a skill feat, pick your favorite, and you get another class feat, which we are going to eschew to get the Dragon Disciple feat, Scales of the Dragon. This basically turns our body into a set of studded leather armor, and at that point we can shed our buckle armor. Specifically, the Scales of the Dragon makes your body give you an armor bonus of plus 2, with a max dex of 3. It doesn't have an armor penalty and doesn't require any amount of strength. It also allows you to apply runes from Explorer's Clothing, so an Enchanted Gi works for you. From there on, you can level up as you see fit. Now, I can foresee a few people making some arguments against this build. Maybe you don't want to play a rage-filled murder samurai. That's fine. Unless your GM is a jerk, they will probably let you reflavor a Barbarian's Rage as something like maybe Hyperfocus, where your swordsman gets so fixated on sword fight that they don't think about anything else. Or maybe you enter a form of battle trance. As long as the mechanics don't change, I don't think many GMs would have a problem with people changing the flavor of a Barbarian Rage. Also, the edicts and anathema of a Dragon Instinct Barbarian can be a little arduous. For example, you can't let an insult slide, which means if some elitist, classist NPC starts throwing shade at your character during a fancy dinner party, things could go downhill fast. One of the downsides of the build. Alright, so I've done what I've set out to do. Make three anime-style swordsmen using three different techniques. But as I've been making these videos, something unexpected happened, and that is you, the audience. I'm very grateful and thankful that you guys have responded so positively to all of these videos, and actually all of my latest videos. And that's why I'm actually going to do a fourth one of these, where I will showcase a few builds that you, the audience, have volunteered. These are builds I never would have thought of on my own, but were brought up in the comments by you and in other videos. And a few of these comments have sparked some new ideas in me. So, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you for a final anime-style swordsman build next week. If you like this channel and want to see it grow, please like and subscribe. That tells not only me, but also YouTube, that you want to see more of my kind of content. Until then, thank you, good luck, and happy gaming.